This is part two of the Science 10 Genetics Lecture for May 22nd uh, of the information uh, presented in class as an overview. Uh, the first part we have here is a table of the messenger RNA code after it's been copied to DNA and the amino acid associated with it. As we can see, there's some redundancy in the system. Uh, proline, uh, for example, is coded by CCU, CCC, CCA, and CCG. This is to be expected, as we said, uh, there's 64 different possible codes for 20 amino acids. Uh, there are some that are used uh, for other purposes than uh, amino acids. We have stop two stop codons over here. Um, methionine, although it's not labeled is a, as a start codon, is actually the start one. So every protein begins with methionine. As well, um, the redundancy we see, that if we look at it closely, and this is just interesting, uh, the code is grouped. Uh, with proline, if you start off with two C's, you're, it doesn't matter what the last base is, it's all proline. Same with glycine. If you start off with two G's, you get glycine. This has caused some uh, biologists to theorize that the original code was actually two bases. There were perhaps only 16 amino acids that made up organisms. And that uh, organisms evolved uh, to have more so they could increase the number of amino acids that they had available. And in evolving that, uh, they duplicated the code for some of them. But for other ones, such as histidine and uh, glutamine, uh, they were able to separate into two different amino acids. Uh, the the grouping of codes uh, suggests this. Now, this is, of, is of course, difficult to prove uh, because it's difficult to get, for example, fossil evidence of something as, as nebulous as a genetic code. But this has definitely supported the hypothesis in, in, a, in a little bit. And this um, an interesting hypothesis. Uh, given the grouping that we see, we can sort of, sort of see into our evolutionary past just on the code itself. Another thing interesting about this code is that it works for all organisms. We take a human gene, for example, out of for insulin, put it into a bacteria, and the bacteria or ribosomes will read it and make the correct protein. Uh, this is simply astounding that you can have different organisms reading the same code. Um, if it wasn't for a connected evolutionary history, one uh, could suspect that maybe different types of organisms would have different codes. Um, the code doesn't have to be the same in every organism as long as it's consistent within organisms. Uh, but given that all organisms share the same code is a very strong argument in favor of, a, of our shared evolutionary heritage. How is this done? Just as an overview, if we have our DNA molecule here, uh, we'll take this top strand as our reading strand. It is translated into, uh, sorry, transcribed into RNA. It's done through complementary base pairing, T going to A. A now goes to U. RNA, unlike DNA, does not have T. It does not have thymine as a base. It has uracil, which replaces it. So for mRNA, the A goes to U. But everything else is the same. C goes to G, C goes to G, G goes to C, um, C goes to G, and so on, down the mRNA strand. That is sent to a ribosome in the cytoplasm where it is translated into protein. We can predict um, AUG right here codes for methionine. So the first amino acid would be methionine. G, C, G. GCG right there codes for alanine. So the second amino acid would be alanine. And so methionine, alanine, leucine, and alanine again uh, would be this our, our small little protein made of four amino acids. As we can see, DNA to RNA, you get a structure that's quite similar. This is why it's known as transcription or a copy. But from RNA to protein, it's very, very different. The protein is a different structure. It has made of different types of materials um, when it's going off. And this could be made into an enzyme um, or protein that you find in muscle um, or any other structure that your body needs made out of protein. Now, just to finish off this introduction, uh, if this was a DNA strand, predict 
uh, the second strand of the DNA. So if this was one half of the strand, predict the second half of the strand. And then if this is the reading strand, this is the one we're going to read from. Predict the mRNA strand that would be read from that strand. Predict the copy. Uh, pause the video, try and do that, and then restart it for the answer. Okay, change the pen color. Uh, the paired DNA strand, T goes to A, A goes to T, C goes to G, A goes to T, T, A, C, G, C. And this would be the complete DNA molecule. Now the mRNA that is read from that, T once again goes to A. A goes not to T, but to U. C goes to G. A goes to, not to T, but to U. A goes to U. T goes to A. G goes to C. C goes to G. And G goes to C. And this would be our mRNA transcription. Uh, in grade 10, you'll never actually have to use this table to translate into amino acids, uh, but you may be asked in order to just quickly give the opposite strand uh, using this pairing pattern. Uh, that's the end for the review information for the May 22nd Genetics Lecture for Science 10.